to our worship experience. We're so very glad that you decided to stop scrolling and to join our loving, community-driven, and family-centered ministry here at SG. It is our mission to save our generation by restoring men and women back to their rightful place in the kingdom of God. So through evangelism, through discipleship, we can activate inner healing and provide spiritual empowerment, ministering to the total person, spirit, soul, and body. So to all of you who are watching, welcome home. You know you belong here. You know you experience the presence of God. You know you need a rhema word for your right now situation. So what I need you to do is hit the share button and text somebody this week. Hit share. Share the option to watch it right there on their phone and tell them we owe God a great praise. We owe God a great thank you. Our gratitude belongs to our Savior. Our gratitude belongs to our healer. Hallelujah. Our gratitude belongs to the miracle worker here.
confidence, greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. We need more of the Lord. Yeah. 
lift your hands and worship the Lord. Like where you are in your home, wherever you are watching, I want you to lift your hands and worship Him. If you want to run over, lift your hand and get up glory. Come on, if that's your, your heart's cry, if that is your prayer. Father, we worship you, we adore you, we magnify you, we lift you up. You alone are worthy. You are wonderful, you are great, you are powerful, you are loving, you are merciful and gracious. And we bless your holy name. And we give you glory and honor. We lift your name on high. We stand before a full fountain as empty vessels. Give us now, God. We want our cup to run over in the name of Jesus. God, have your way in us. Have your way through us, for us. In the name of Jesus, we want to run over. We want to run over like never before. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, touch our minds, touch our hearts, touch our souls. In the name of Jesus. Father, we need you now more than ever. Strengthen us now. Send strength, God. Strengthen us out of Zion. Help us out of the hill. In the name of Jesus. Pull out your spirit upon us. Let your glory be revealed. Deliver your people now. Stretch out your hand toward them. Lift them up where they belong. Say the Lord, God, rebuke you. We bind you in the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. The hand of God binds you. The name of Jesus. My hand of blood is against you. We cancel the plan and the distraction of the enemy. Father, we thank you for your word that shall go forth from your power. Send your word, Lord. Somebody is in desperate need of you. Send your glory. For when glory shows up, anything can happen. When glory shows up, healing, deliverance takes place in the name of Jesus. Send your thoughts and that makes preaching easy. Send your power of God that will unstuck their ears. That will awaken us in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders in Jesus' name. And we praise you. Come on. And we praise you. And we praise you. And we praise you. And we praise you. We worship you. We adore you. We lift you. For you are worthy of our praise. And we thank you in advance for what you're about to do. And we thank you in advance for what you're about to do. And we thank you in advance for what you're about to do. And we thank you in advance. And we thank you. I said we thank you in advance. But it's already done. In the name of Jesus, you're turning it right now. You're gifted. You're restoring. You're rejuvenating. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give a shift to the atmosphere. Thank you, the atmosphere conducive. The miracle signs and wonders blessings shall take place in Jesus' name. It is done. Come on, clap your hands and pray the Lord. Clap your hands and pray the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord. I want you to lift your voice, lift your attention to Luke chapter 10. Very familiar story. Luke chapter 10, verse number 30. Just another day by the Lord. He had a scalping. Just another day.
was still left. As the years went by, the baby grew into a lovely, charming, beautiful young lady. And on her 16th birthday, while roaming about the castle, she came upon a secret room at the very top of the castle towers. Curious, she wanted to help an old woman bent over a spinning wheel. She says, oh, what is this? She cried, never seen this before. She pleaded with the woman, please let me try this as well. But the minute she touched the spindle, the needle on the spinning wheel, she fell to the ground and the witch's spell came true. With a heavy heart, the king ordered her to be taken to the grand room where she would lie for many years. The whole kingdom was sad and called her their sleeping beauty. Uh -huh. The youngest sparrow watched all of this and said with, with uh, a wave of her hand, let the whole kingdom fall asleep with the princess so when she was awakened by her prince, she will not be alone. The moment she says this, all the people and the animals in the kingdom fell asleep. Everything stopped. Yes. As years passed, a thick forest grew around the kingdom and was hidden. Eventually, hundred years later, a handsome prince was passing through the forest when he discovered the strange kingdom. While exploring it, he was surprised to find a sleeping beauty lying fast asleep immediately fell in love with her and said, I want to know who she is. Uh -huh. He, how gentle and peaceful she looks, he says. He leaned down and kissed her and instantly the spell was lifted. The princess and all the people awoke and joy and celebration filled the entire kingdom and the prince and the princess soon married and lived happily ever after the end. My brothers and my sisters, you and I were like this innocent young little girl was given special gifts, was given special talents, was given special abilities to be clever and beautiful and kind. But one day, like this little girl, a wicked witch came through no fault of her own. This little innocent child was cursed to death. I often wondered what did this little child do to make this wicked fairy curse this little angel? Uh -huh. The answer is absolutely nothing. Therefore, I must conclude it was a vendetta against the king and the queen that brought such hatred against the princess by this wicked fairy. All right. Child of God, I want to let you know that everything that has happened to you this far in life is not because of something that you've done or anything that you've done wrong is simply because you belong to the king. All right. The name of God is on your life. The, the, the enemy hates you because the king has favored you and given you special gifts and given you special talents. And some people just will not like you and will hate you for no reason at all simply because you have gifts and talents and abilities that you possess. Just originate now, but from the 
began to fight. When Satan was kicked out of heaven in Ezekiel chapter 28 and fell to the earth and destroyed the earth. The text said that darkness was upon the face of the deep in Genesis chapter 1. And while the earth was traumatized by Satan, God put the earth to sleep. <laughs> Verse number 2 of Genesis chapter 1 said the spirit of the Lord moved. Uh, like in the Greek, uh, that move means hover. All the face of the loss. In other words, it rested on the earth until God the Creator, the Father, was ready to say, Let there be. Come on, sir. Now God has awakened the heavens and the earth once again. I want to know there's somebody here that realizes that, 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 that the Spirit of God is just hovering over my life. He's resting over my life. I like the Bible when it says, like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. All he's doing is he's just hovering over me. He's just getting me ready. Because any day now he's going to say that, there be. I wish I had somebody like a priest do. That I can praise God that any day now, any moment now, any second now, any hour now, he's going to say let there be. Hallelujah. He now makes uh, in his own likeness, he makes man in his own image. Man has a body and a soul. But God breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul. He awakened himself. He who was unconscious, asleep, gives him dominion and authority over the Father's creation. One day, a man pricks his finger on the spindle of sin. Is now doomed to die. Man that now uh, succumbed to the trauma of sin and forever banished from the Father. In other words, he's spiritually asleep. But here comes our Prince, Prince Jesus, Prince the Son of God who gives his life on the cross, kisses us with his blood stained lips. Now that we receive him, ah, the Son of God, and awaken, and one day will be Mary and Leah happily ever after. The end. Amen. Amen. My brother, my sister, hold on, huh, because I believe that Prince Jesus is on the way to awaken us. I wish I had somebody, I could, I could have some church with me, because I realize that Jesus is on the way. I, I may be tired, I may be worn out, I may be uh, just depressed, I may well, feel like I want to give up, but if I can just hold on to Jesus, shows up. So then it are amazingly interesting that whenever the body has, has experienced trauma, it's been traumatized during uh, due to a physical assault or a, an emotional or mental harm or attack. The body's offense, a defense rather, mechanism is to go into a deep sleep. Come on, sir. It goes into sleep mode so that it may heal on, itself. Sir. I wish I had somebody I could talk to. I'm so to talk to you because you don't want to talk to me. Whenever we are sick or when we are in surgery or when we're recovering, uh, we are we are sedated, yeah. placed on a deep sleep. So even by heavy medication, that the body and the mind may begin to start the healing process, and soon we are waiting to fully recover. Uh, we too were traumatized by sin, traumatized by rejection, traumatized and abandoned, hurt and abused, neglected by those we trusted and disappointed, and left alone, traumatized by the words those who we love, traumatized by the words of our enemies, traumatized by negativity that will hurl towards us. But don't you dare give up. Do I have somebody? Don't you dare give in. The prince is on the way. We've been traumatized by life. One day life can bring us so much joy, and the next day bring us so much pain and heartache. Life's joy and sorrows do not discriminate neither is it prejudice. It gives us no choices, neither does it ask any questions. But there is something about life. It gives us time. Time does not heal our wounds, but life gives us time to begin the healing process. I want to say that again. Time does not heal our wounds, but life affords us time so that healing can begin. 
Aqui, ó. Manda que eu me toco. Até me dar uma mosquinha. Manda que eu me toco. 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 Certain nation 
has been stripped of his pride and dignity. Honesty and wounded by selfishness, wounded by greed, power, and ambition. Now we're left half dead because of hatred and racism and bigotry. But look at America. She's like a certain man who was laying there half dead, barely hanging on for dear life, barely surviving a, a destroyed economy, barely surviving a skyrocketing unemployment rate, barely surviving poverty rate is at an all time record high. Over 350,000 of our fellow Americans are dead unnecessarily due to the derelict of the responsibility and mismanagement of leadership, failed policies that benefit only not just the rich and wealthy, but, but the only our benefits go at the top of the, of the food chain. Uh, the, 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 the barely hanging on because of an unjust criminal justice system, failed police systems uh, that harbor racist police officers, eroded trust in the government and news media outlets, African Americans dying in the streets, dying in their homes, dying while jogging, dying while protesting, and dying while playing on the playground. If those insurrectionists who committed seditious acts were black and brown, they would be dead right now, wounded in jail. Instead, they were, they were assisted and abandoned and treated like human beings, not like the criminals that they are. Therefore, we've been stripped, wounded, and left half dead. We're in a coma. I'm going to tell you right now, America, we're in a coma. Uh, we've been traumatized. We've been sedated asleep, barely hanging on to life. Uh, but my question is, who will be the one who will come along and awaken us? Who will be the one who will come along and breathe life into us? Who is in, where is the church? Where is our prince? Where is the church of the Lord Jesus, the body of Christ, that's going to come along and see our dead America, half dead America, laying there and bring new life into yes, sir, our nation? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Mm, I see the priest of the Lord mandates that a person of such standard of his high office. In Leviticus chapter 21, verses 1 through 17, he cannot touch anyone who is dead. Not even a relative or anyone close to him, lest he defile himself and become unclean. The church and its leadership has become so obsessed with the, its role, rules and pious and its protocols and its piety and religious dogma that it has left people half dead. Yes, he was following the law, but not giving any grace to those that needed it. The law says. He's dead by his own hand or by others. He's sinned. He's messed up, fallen from grace, not realizing he's barely hanging on. How my question is, Mr. Priest, Brother Priest, Bishop Priest, what is the church pontifical response to a world, to a nation, to a community, to a neighborhood, or to a family that has been left half dead, wounded and stripped and naked and barely? Alive. What is the church's response yeah, yeah, to us? Yeah, yeah. The priest kept walking. He didn't want to devour himself. Jesus. He didn't want to be deemed unclean, unfit to minister or serve in the temple. Uh -huh. The church is so focused on position and title. Power so we can advance the institution instead of advancing the kingdom. Uh -huh. I wish I was asking.
in outward appearance of compassion, but denying the power of God to change hearts and lives. The Levite, I can imagine, had the power to assume. You know how we religious folks are, church folks are. We have the anointing to assume. We assume because we see people smiling that they're happy. We assume because we see people driving a nice car that they are rich. We assume because they are married and they've been together for a long time that they must be happy because he's buying her nice things. Not realizing that when they go in the house, he's probably punching her and kicking her and abusing her sexually or mentally or physically or verbally. We assume we are tithing those people. But on the outside. We assume uh, because they're smiling that they're not mean as a junkyard dog. We assume and we die those people from their outward appearance. But I'm going to tell somebody don't assume how I look, but assume how I praise God. Because the harder I praise, the more I go through. The more I challenge, the more the devil comes at me. The harder I worship. Not like David said, I So when you see me coming to church and I'm shouting, dancing, when you see me lifting my hands and worshiping, then you get a sword that the devil is on my tracks. For I want to have a testimony that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Don't assume my outward appearance, but look at my praise. Look at my worship, because I am a testimony. Is there anybody here? God that realize that I am a testimony. Look at my past and see how far God brought me from. Look at my struggle and see that I'm still here. Look at my pain and see that God is on my side. Look at what I've gone through and realize that God's hand of favor is still on my life. Lift your hand and shout, yes! I got to close. I got to close. We look. We look at the drug addict. We look at the backslider. We look at and observe the prostitute. We look at the teenage pregnant mother and father. Uh, we look at the young hot tempered gangster. The generation uh, of the millennial, the generation Y and Z. And we judge them. We assume that they're doomed forever. We assume that there's no hope for them. We look at the struggles and uh, they hurt, the wounded, the stripped, the left half dead. Uh, the disgrace, the embarrassed. And we abandon them because of what we heard uh -huh. and what we thought we saw. Yes, uh, but they are bleeding. Yes. Left half dead. Uh -huh. Yes, we are so focused on our own lives yes, that we develop a sense of apathy. Yes. Not caring what happens to others unless it happens to ourselves. Yes. But when we heal others, is when God will allow the healing to begin in us. Yeah. What you make happen for other folks, yeah. God will make happen for you. Yeah. When you promote somebody else, when you encourage somebody else, yeah. when you push somebody else, yeah. when you pray for somebody else, yeah. I don't care what's going on in your life, yeah. God will turn things around for you. Yeah. Is there anybody here yeah. that don't testify? Yeah. I pray for somebody else's marriage, yeah. and God healed mine. Yeah. I pray for somebody else's child, Situation, God turn it around for me. Don't you realize that God knows what you're going through? But He wants to see. Are you going to forget about yourself, about your own situation, about your own problems, and begin to intercede for somebody else? Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and what He's done for me and my brother and my sister, all I can do is lift my hand and praise Him. Because if God can do it for you, then God can do it for me.
certain men. He survived the thugs and robbers. He survived the racism. He survived slavery. He survived bigotry. Uh, he survived Jim Crow laws. He survived segregationists. He survived reconstruction era. Oh, he survived civil rights marches. He survived the George Floyd episode. When he was murdered in the streets, he survived being beaten by Billy Club of police officers. He survived being tased by the racist officers. He survived the police brutality, stripping of subpar public housing, disenfranchised, drug infested neighborhoods. He survived being beaten by stereotypes and rejection. Oh Lord, he survived being hurt by pain and brokenness, broken homes and failures of loved ones, of loveless relationships, dad's dreams and hopeless futures. Oh, he survived being left by society church and religious institutions played by their ego, pride and ambitions. He survived. He survived it all. But one day he realized if I can hang on in there, my awakening is on the way. I wish I had somebody that would understand if I can hold
a spiritual awakening. Yes. I want you to, 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 to believe God by faith. And I want you to, to, to adhere to the time of fasting. 21 days yes, of fasting. Begins at midnight tonight. And ends January 31st. Come on, I want you to, 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 to believe God that I'm going to discipline myself for 21 days. I'm going to fast. We are observing the keto fast. But you can fast how do you how the Lord leads you. But I want you to fast. Let's, get, let's, let's become whole. Let's, let's come together as a body of Christ. And let's fast and pray. Always remember Jesus. Jesus. Always remember Look forward real soon. God bless you. We look to hear from you Tuesday night. It's our prayer. Peace and favor.